What's going on, everybody? It's Stas here. So the stock market is having yet again another strong day today. S&P 500 up 20 points, up about half a percent. The Dow Jones up 260 points, up 0.9 percent. And the Nasdaq is not doing too great today, but it's still up 0.1 percent, up about 12 points with about 25 minutes left in today's session. And in this video, we're going to be talking more about the stock market, breaking down some technicals, going over the top stocks that I'm looking to buy as we're wrapping up August and heading into September here of 2020. And I also want to go over some notes here from Jerome Powell, some jobless claims numbers, as well as what I've been doing here in the market as of late. What stocks have I been buying? What have I been selling, if anything, right? So a lot to go over in this video. If you guys find value, hit that like button for me. Consider subscribing. Join our Discord chat and Facebook group. Those are free down below in the description box. Make sure to join those and also claim your two free stocks from Webull. Those are valued up to $1,400. And I actually just got an email from Webull. This two free stock promotion is actually running out on September 1st. So get your two free stocks right now. Again, link down below. All you have to do is deposit $100 using that link. And that is when you get your two free stocks. So let's get into it here, guys. Again, we have about 24 minutes left in the session today. And despite us seeing a dip today in the S&P from $3,500 down to about $3,470, we are still in charge by the bulls. The bulls are still in charge here. And we can see it very clearly on this five-day, five-minute. We hit an all-time high at 3,501 at about 12 noon time here on the East Coast. We pulled down from there. We held the support. We shook out some weak hands, right? The market kind of tested the uptrend from the past couple of days. And over the past three, three and a half hours, ever since that 3470 hold here at a higher low on the five day, five minute chart, we've been rallying. The bulls took this as a buying opportunity and it started to push higher. So that is telling me, hey, the bulls are in charge, especially if we're able to get out of 3,500 and break another all-time high here in the next 25 minutes. We'll see what ends up happening. And uh, it seems like the bulls are going to close in charge despite what happens, whether we rally into the close or we sell off into the close. I take today as a win for the bulls, right? And on that note, yeah, we are crushing it. Markets are getting higher and higher. And as higher and higher and the higher and higher we go, the more in need of a pull down we are, guys. Let's be quite honest because the markets can't go higher every single day. It's not reality. And the RSI here on the S&P 500 is at 84. That means it is very overbought. So I would not be surprised if we did see some sort of cool off here in the market. I don't know if it's going to come tomorrow, next week, the week after, but like I've been saying here on the channel, maybe a cool off to 3,400 would be good for the S&P right around this 50 SMA on this four hour chart, maybe even 3,420 to 3,450, right? I think anything, any signs of weakness could be a buying opportunity moving forward. So those are some uh, pointers there and some thoughts on the S&P. Very strong. Bulls are in charge, but as we get higher and higher, guys, again, we are in more and more need of a pull down. So keep that in the back of your minds when you are making your buying decisions. And going over here to the uh, to the Dow Jones, we broke out of 28,200. This was back, I believe, um, yesterday. I think we did that, and we really solidified a bigger pop out today, obviously, as we're up almost 1% right now. And that is a very good sign here for the bulls, as this is telling me that price action is looking to push us up to the mid 29,000s. And, and that happens to be the all time high here on the Dow Jones, which at this point is only a thousand points away, guys. So we're in striking distance. We're about 3% away from this all time high here on the Dow Jones. And it's about time. I mean, we've seen the NASDAQ hit all-time highs. We've seen the S&P, but as the Dow lacks a lot of tech companies, it's been lagging behind the market. So it makes sense, and we'll see what happens here moving forward. And speaking of tech, tech is actually 
lagging today. It hasn't been lagging, but today it is lagging. NASDAQ is actually creeping into the red right now, down about three points. And that is because Netflix is down 20 points today. Netflix is down on a percentage basis. Let's take a look here, about almost 4%. Google is down about 1% today. Facebook is down about 3% today. Amazon's down almost 1%. And Apple is also down about 1% today. And the only green stock out of the big tech names is Microsoft. So that is why the, the NASDAQ is lagging a bit today. All tech is red for the most part, big tech at least other than Microsoft, which is up over 3%. And we'll get into this one here in a couple of minutes. So it seems like the NASDAQ is starting to cool off a bit. But then again, we take a look at this five-day, five-minute. We did cool off. We actually hit an all-time high today, believe it or not, at 12,470, um, or actually 12,047 points, all-time high. We pulled down from there. And why I'm thinking the bulls are still in charge on the NASDAQ is because very similar to the S&P 500, we're holding the uptrend here on the five-day, five-minute. We pulled down, we held the uptrend, and we're rallying into the close. Now, the question is whether or not we're going to close in the green or the red since because uh, since we're at pretty much break even at this point. But either way, it's uh, a good close here for the bulls as we held that higher low on the five-day, five-minute. So let me know down below, guys, what are your thoughts on the markets today? and uh, just pointers that you have, stocks you're watching. I would love to just hear your side of the, uh, of the coin, any insights that you have. And we obviously knew Jerome Powell was speaking today at about 9 a.m. Eastern Standard, and we were taking a look at how he was going to be approaching, approaching inflation, right? And, and on top of that, we got jobless claims numbers. And just to get those out of the way, jobless claims numbers came in at 1 million for the week ending August 22nd, down from 1.104 million in the previous week. It was the 22nd week in the last 23 weeks that the jobless claims were above 1 million. So that is insane. And since the, the uh, pandemic began, the initial jobless claims have jumped by more than 58 million. And are 58 million people still unemployed? I mean, who knows at this point, right? Who knows out of those 58 million who filed initially, how many of them are still unemployed? How many have gone back to work? The truth is we don't know the numbers, but either way, 60, roughly 60 million people since everything started filing for jobless claims. I mean, that is pretty insane here in the United States. So going back over to what Jerome Powell said, and I'm reading here from my notes, guys. I type notes for every single video in my notes app here on my iPhone. So that's why I'm glancing down, obviously. And we see here in a move that Jerome Powell called a robust updating of the Fed policy, the central bank formally agreed to a policy of average inflation targeting. That means it will allow inflation to run moderately above the Fed's 2% goal for some time here, following periods when it has uh, run below that objective. As a practical matter, this means that the Fed will be less inclined to hike interest rates when the unemployment rate falls, so long as inflation does not creep up as well. Central banks officials traditionally have detailed that low unemployment leads to dangerously high levels of inflation, and they've moved preemptively to head it off. So pretty much what we saw earlier in this crisis was the that that Jerome Powell was saying he's not even looking at, or what what, were, what was the exact quote? He's not even thinking about thinking about raising interest rates. And he was saying that until I believe 2022, he wasn't looking to increase interest rates. So now it's pushed back even more. I believe it's it's five years. He, he's uh, looking to do low interest rates close to 0%. So we're going to be seeing 0% for a while. And this is really just to stimulate the economy. There's obviously fears of deflation at this point, which is why he's looking to kind of let the inflation rate run rampant, even if it goes above 2%. 
because he's scared of deflation. He wants this economy to continue to be stimulated, right? And that's why he's keeping those 0% interest rates. So that's kind of the gist of it. I mean, we could talk more about it, but I don't want to make this whole video about that. And if you guys, of course, have any thoughts, feel free to chime in down below in the comments. But that's pretty much it, right? We had Powell talking. We got jobless claims numbers today. All-time highs on the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow is crushing it as well. And the Bulls are still in charge, guys. The Bulls are still in charge, and it seems like that is going to remain for now. So let's get into what I personally did today, and I made a fresh move. And you guys might think I'm crazy, and quite honestly, this is a bit risky, but I bought into Apple today. Yes, I bought into Apple today, AAPL, and many of you guys know tomorrow is the last day to buy the shares before the split goes through. And am I buying the shares because of the split? No, honestly, that's not why I'm buying them. Um, but it could, it could end up pushing my shares higher. Uh, that's the truth. And, you know, I'm in this mostly because... I saw this dip from 515 down to about 500, and I know that psychologically the shares could go higher after the split, so maybe a little bit, yeah, I'm, I'm in this a little bit for the split, but, and, and, and the thing is, if it runs up tomorrow, I might sell out, so I'm kind of in Apple at this point in anticipation, maybe a little bit for the split, but more so tomorrow, because I think a lot of people are going to buy into Apple tomorrow, quite honestly. And tomorrow we might see the stock go higher. Key, key word there, might. This could blow up in my face. I could lose money and that's okay. But I bought into Apple today at $504.60 initially. This was when you guys can see it here on the five day, five minute. I bought it when it held this trend in the morning, right around 504.60, then we broke that trend that you guys see here on the five day, five minute. And I ended up buying a little bit more at 498 as it hit my limit order right around here. So I'm in Apple right around the $500 uh, level at this point, And I'm looking at it as a hold. I mean, I'm not scared to hold it tomorrow. Um, and even through the split, I'm quite honestly not. I don't think it's going to tank after the split. And I don't know if it's going to explode after the split. For all we know, it could just consolidate after the split and rise slowly over time. I mean, that's kind of what people think it could happen or it could do or it could dump. It, it really could do anything at this point. And for me, I, I have the risk tolerance to hold this overnight and maybe for a couple of days with a pretty small position at around 500. So I'm in Apple and you guys know that I've been in Foot Locker for a couple of days here. I'm still holding that at $29.62. A little bit green right now on my position. Literally pennies in the green. Nothing crazy. And if you guys actually want to see a uh, further update video on Foot Locker, more of an in-depth analysis on this particular company, you're in luck. I actually just uploaded a video earlier today. I'll have a card up here and it's linked down below in the description box. Make sure to go check that out. It's about 20 minutes, all about Foot Locker. I think you guys will find value in it. So I'm in Foot Locker 2960. I think a big portion of the move is going to come above $30. So I'm waiting to add the bulk of my position above $30. And again, if you guys want to see a more in depth and more thoughts about it, check out that video down below. And I'm also in Upwork, UPWK here at $14.40. And today, pretty strong day for Upwork. I mean, it's not a killer day compared to some of these other names that have been going up 10% in a day, but it's up about 0.8%, nothing crazy. We're recovering above that $14 level of support right around where I started buying my shares, right around $14.40. So that's good. And at this point, and I've been talking about this in the Discord chat, which again is linked down below, it's free of charge to join. I've been talking about how Upwork, if it breaks $15, $16, that is where I really think it could gain a head of steam and get back up to $16, $17, $18. And I might even buy some call options here on Webull with, uh, for Upwork because of my strong confidence in this stock 
going to that level. So that's why I'm holding it. And I'm also in workhorse still, WKHS. I'm holding this one, and I plan on to for the foreseeable future. Today, it's down about 3.5%, but one thing I'm loving about it is here on the hourly, you guys can see we're holding the uptrend at a higher low. We're holding last week's highs at about 1650 as a support. So now all we need to see is on this five-day, five-minute, a full-out break up towards $18, and if 18 breaks, oh boy, workhorse is going to be off to the races. So watch out there. I'm personally in around $16, and again, I don't plan on selling anytime soon. That's just my opinion. And I'm also in gold, GLD, and GDX just to have some exposure there. They were actually doing pretty well earlier in anticipation to Jerome Powell speaking, and we can see gold. I mean, it's down about 14 points right now. The futures are, but earlier, if we open up this one day, one minute, it was up to 1990, guys. Take a look at that fear, right? Right? You can see it's correlated exactly to when Jerome Powell spoke. He spoke at 9, 10 a.m. That's when he started at least. And exactly at 9 a.m., gold went from 1950 to 1990. So a 40 point spike. And then as he started speaking, as he started to speak about lower interest rates for a longer period of time, whatever, yada, 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 gold went down from 1987 all the way down to 1918. It sold off about 70 points, guys. 70 points. And this could be because, you know, A, again, they were looking for what Powell was going to say. And now that they're going to keep rates lower for a longer period of time, you know, <clears throat> this could really influence people to take money out of gold, potentially, and then push it into the markets. Because cheap money goes really in correlation with the stock prices going higher. Quantitative easing means stock prices are going to go higher. Real estate is going to go higher. So maybe people are taking their money out of gold, but that doesn't mean I am. I'm still holding on to gold as that hedge, as that diversity in my overall portfolio. And I continue and plan to continue to do so. And I plan to continue adding to GDX for sure. And maybe even GLD as well. And I plan on buying even more physical gold because I do like collecting it. I, I actually like collecting coins. I've mentioned that before here on the channel. That's kind of a little side thing for me, a side hobby, uh, if, if you like to call it. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what I'm doing, guys. I'm in gold. I'm in workhorse, Upwork, Foot Locker, Apple. Those are my main moves right now. And I'd love to know what you guys are doing. Let me know down below in the comments. Again, I love love talking to you all. I try to respond to every single one of you. Now, let's talk about some stocks here that are moving. Let's just put it that way. They have some upside. They have even more upside from here. And one of them is Starbucks. And not to toot my own horn, guys. I don't like doing that. Tons on this channel. But I like giving myself credit sometimes. And with Starbucks, I'm going to give myself some credit because I've been calling Starbucks out from $73 to $75 to $77. And if you guys have been following my M1 Finance portfolio, you guys have been seeing in that portfolio, which is a long-term portfolio for me that I'm building here on the channel, and you can find that in my playlists and, and watch the whole series, I've been talking about and buying... Starbucks at $73, at $75, at $77, right? Because I've been saying the stock's beaten down. It's a great company. It's still growing pretty nicely. And on top of that, has a strong dividend and it's poised to, ba to bounce back as the economy gets back to normal. And every time I go to Starbucks, guys, and trust me, I don't go that often, but I do enjoy my Starbucks sometimes. I mean, this place is so packed, guys. The line is to the street sometimes the drive through it's just unbelievable and uh that just goes to show business is doing well they're adapting to drive more drive through and so forth and the stock is it's crushing it i mean we broke uh 80 bucks that was a big resistance well first and foremost 79 to 80 that that was more more of the resistance around 79 to 80 that was a big resistance from back in the middle of April, stemming back all the way months ago, guys. So we broke that. We filled all the way up to $81. We broke that, held $81, $81.50 as a new support. Now we're looking to fill the gap up 
to the next big level of resistance right around $85. So I'm loving Starbucks here. Um, I don't know if I'm buying more in my long-term accounts quite yet. Probably I might uh, just average in over the next couple of weeks, but Either way, I am holding this, and I think over time, it's going to get to 90 it's going to break 90 and uh, eventually get to $100 per share. That's where I think Starbucks is going. And another one here that we've been calling out and talking about like crazy is Cheesecake Factory, C-A-K-E. This is one that I've been buying in my Roth IRA, actually, as a more of a value turnaround type of play in the current economy that we're in. I think Cheesecake Factory could be a stock worth maybe $40 per share in a couple of years. On top of that, if they start paying their dividend again, I believe, wait, are they paying a dividend? No, no, no. They cut the dividend. I believe they cut the dividend, but I'm not really in this for a dividend either way. Um, but yeah, I'm in this in my Roth IRA, 22 bucks. I believe I was buying in $23 was averaging in as well. And in my trading account, now I'm looking at it as a as a momentum play as it broke out of $27. 27 was a resistance back from the middle of June, back towards the end of July, back in the middle of August. And quite honestly, $28 was also a resistance, which get, guess what, guys? We broke that today. So we broke 27. We broke 28, which was the resistance from the 25th of August, which was on Tuesday. We actually held 28 as a support today, and we're rallying into the close. So this is looking very bullish overall for Cheesecake Factory, and I think it could get to $30. That's my low... Uh, low Actually, no, what's the word? Short term. I was going to say low term. Short term pr uh, price target from uh, from 28.30 to about 30 bucks. That's where I think we're headed here. So watch out for cheesecake. And another one here that is risky. Don't get me wrong. It's it's extremely risky, guys. Let's let's put an asterisk on that. Extremely risky is Shill, also known as Helion, also known as Tortoise Acquisition Group, ticker symbol S H. LL. This one hit around $43 a share back in, this was literally in the beginning of the week or the end of last week. And from there, I believe it had a 30% day on Monday. And from there, it's gone down about 30%. Actually, not 30%. I'm exaggerating. Maybe around, yeah, 20%. Either way, we pulled down from 43 bucks almost down to where we are now at about 36. And this very well could be a momentum play as well. If you guys didn't know, Helium is merging with Tortoise Acquisition Group, I believe some point in September. Is it September 15th? I'm sure many of you guys know more about Helion than me, so let me know down below in the comments. Quite honestly, I haven't done extreme research into this one like I've done with other ones such as Neo and Workhorse, but I'll get to uh, SHLL <clears throat> in a little bit and I'll do a deeper dive into it. But overall, the momentum here could be worth looking at could be worth looking at, especially as we've been cooling off these past couple of days. So watch out for Tortoise Acquisition Group, and especially if it can break out of 38, that could be where it starts to take off. And another one here, guys, which is unbelievable, Adobe. Adobe kind of got a, a, a push from, I believe, CRM. CRM went up it kind of pushed up a lot of uh, other software companies. Um, CRM, Salesforce, if you guys didn't know, they got included into the Dow 30. They had very good earnings. They, they've just been crushing it over the past couple of trading days. And yeah, maybe ADBE got some push from them. And either way, the stock is pulling down <clears throat> from 50 or 533 down to about 510. That's a pull down of close to 6%. So one could argue that this is a dip buy on a stock that has insane momentum and more upside to come. So I'm watching ADBE here also known as Adobe. I'm sure many of you guys use their products. Very nice company. I love it. I'm a customer. And yeah, so watching it here, 
20 bucks off the highs. And sure, it could go lower. It could go lower. I'd be more excited about it if it did go to 480, maybe 470. But that might not happen. That might not happen. And let's say if it holds and breaks out 520, it's most likely not going to happen. So from 510, 515, 520 up to 530, that is where I'm looking to make this move. And we got some news here from TikTok. TikTok is nearing an agreement to sell its U.S., Canadian, Australian, and New Zealand operations in a deal that's likely to be in the $20 billion to $30 billion range, sources say. That's sources say, guys. No one knows if it's true, but let's just run with it. And Walmart, guys, get this, and there goes the market. We'll, we'll wrap up uh, with what we close here in a minute, but Walmart confirms that it's teaming up with Microsoft in a bid for TikTok. So, wow, Walmart. Jeez, I didn't think Walmart was going to get into this. And speaking of Walmart, guys, this is a stock that got hit about 10 bucks per share from its highs after earnings. I mean, we talked about it, right? It went from 145 down to about 130 And now on this news, I mean, it's gone right back up to where it was right around uh, the time it reported earnings. So it's gone from... Again, 130 to 140. Now it pulled down a little bit to 136. So I'm watching this little pull down, quite honestly. This little 2% pull down towards the end of the day. That could be a dip buy heading into tomorrow. But either way, I'm watching Walmart because there's interesting prospects here with this TikTok deal. I mean, I don't know how they could incorporate it. Maybe they could somehow run ads on TikTok and maybe sell through TikTok somehow. Again, I'm not too sure. I'd have to dig deeper into it and obviously wait and see what happens. But it's interesting, guys. So I'm watching Walmart on this momentum here up 4.5% today. And same thing with Microsoft. We mentioned how it's the only tech stock that did very well today. All the other main ones were red. And ever since uh, Microsoft broke 215, it's been on a tear. So at this point... Any weakness is considered a dip buy, in my opinion. If we get to pull down a 220, 215, that general area, that would be a retracement of around, let's say, 6% from here. I would heavily consider buying up some shares there, buying on the dip for the momentum. So overall, I mean, those are the main stocks that I'm focusing on at this point. And I'd love to know what you guys are focusing on. And and as always, I mean, we could talk more and more and more about these stocks, guys, but the videos would be way too long. So let me know in the comments what are your thoughts. And now let's wrap back around and talk about exactly where the markets close for a minute or two, and then we'll wrap up the video. So the S&P closed up six points. So it seems like we saw a bit of a sell-off since the beginning of this video. It makes sense. I mean, we failed breaking out of 3,500 again. Um, that makes sense. So we didn't take out the highs. But either way, I mean, the bulls are in charge still. It doesn't matter. The bulls are in charge. We're at a higher low on the five day, five minute. So it's looking good here. The NASDAQ, let's take a look at what this did down 45 points. Okay. So it took a bit of a beating since uh, when we started down 0.4%, still holding the 180 SMA, still at a higher low, but it needs to break out of uh, earlier today's high for, uh, for the uptrend to continue, obviously. And that's a level that I'm watching for tomorrow. And the Dow, let's take a look at what the Dow did. Dow up 160, Dow up about 1%. And it's still closed as the bulls were in charge above this five day, five minute 180 SMA at a higher low. And take a look, guys. The Dow actually hit a high for the day after we started filming this video. Actually, it was right before we started filming the video. So either way, all the indexes are being dominated by the bulls at this point. And that's it for the video. Let me know your thoughts down below in the description box. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel. And don't forget, claim your two free stocks. Remember, this deal runs out September 1st. Webull literally emailed me a couple days ago telling me this. So if you guys want your two free stocks, two free stocks valued up to $1,400, Check that link down below, deposit $100, you get two free stocks, and I also get two free stocks, and I really do appreciate that as that is an affiliate link. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. As always, stay safe out there, guys. Good luck in this crazy market that we're in. Peace out.